And JD, now the fun part of the podcast. You ready? You ready for this? Yeah. Takeaways from week one. I'm just going to say this, JD. The floor is yours. Well, it's probably the biggest story of uh, week one. Uh, Bengals losing to the New England Patriots. I had a feeling um, you were going to start with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did like it's the only place you can start. That yeah. was, it was it's a it's atrocious. Mm-hmm. And again, no, this is what I'm. If you haven't watched our AFC North breakdown, mm-hmm. I literally said it about the Bengals in that video. Mm-hmm. This team had to start off fast. Yeah, I mean, I picked them to beat the the Patriots, and you know, and now they play the Chiefs this week, and you know, it's it, you, they run the risk of going zero and two for third straight year, and I think the thing that concerned me the most uh, mm-hmm. about this game mm-hmm. is that the defense looked the exact same as last year. You have guys missing tackles. They had, I think it was 14 missed tackles, which was a season high yeah, or a game high sin- or in a season since 2019, I believe. Mm-hmm. And again, you can't have that, but I, I expected it because again, they did literally nothing to address the issues. They brought yeah. in Geno Stone, who is a good coverage, uh, coverage safety. But mm-hmm. the guy can't tackle to save his life. Yeah. They bring in Sheldon Rankins at three tech as a three tech defensive tackle. And guy provided zero pass rush. And the thing with him was, oh, he had six sacks last year. Mm-hmm. Three of them came against the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Half of his sacks. So that's not, and I, I know sacks aren't everything. There's pressures. Yeah. And we'll get to that. In this game, again, too, besides the, the missed tackles, the pass rush did f- all. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't want to swear, but but they did nothing. I was expecting uh, a lot more in this in yeah, this segment. Yeah, to be Trey, honest with Trey, you, Trey Hendrickson had six pressures, which is great. But then on the other defensive end, uh, mm-hmm. Sam Hubbard had he had PFF tracks a win rate percentage each game. Yeah, Sam Hubbard has a zero percent win rate. He did not beat a single block. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that that's even possible as a yeah. starting defensive end, but here mm-hmm. we are. And this was my problem. And I get it. Amaris, Amarius Mims could be a home run pick, could be the be- one of the best offensive tackles in, in the league eventually. Mm-hmm. You needed to draft pass rush. You needed to draft a three tech. Yeah. And okay, you got Chris Jenkins in the second round. He's hurt. And mm-hmm. never really projected to be an elite pass rusher. Mm-hmm. So you didn't really fix that. Miles Murphy, who you drafted in the first round last year, was mm-hmm. primed for a big season and he looked good in the in the preseason and in training camp. He's hurt. Mm-hmm. And then go into the offensive side of the ball. You have Trent Brown as your starting right tackle right now. Guy sucked. He he didn't he came into camp overweight and has been playing catch up and he was horrible. Then your offensive guards, you spend a lot of money on them uh, in 2022. And, but realistically they weren't that great. Well, sorry, your one guard in Alex Kappa. Mm-hmm. And then you drafted uh, Cordell Volson, mm-hmm. but Alex Kappa was never really an elite guard. He was never a pro bowl guard. He was yeah. just a good starter and he's starting to fall off. So that's a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. And then again, now you have T Higgins who's injured and he's probably not going to play this week. And then Jamar chase in this whole contract situation. And that's what I want to touch on as well. This is not only are the Bengals losers on the field. It came out here. Let me, I I have it. I have it written down. Actually, let me just pull this up. Um, So it came out that. Basically, the Bengals and Chase had a deal Mm -hmm. in place. And, you know, they just had to move a couple numbers around. And basically, then, I think it was the the day of the game, 
Chase wanted a bit more guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. Nothing crazy. Just just a bit more. I think it was like I think it was just a higher percentage. And then the Bengals were like, no, we're we're not doing that. We'll 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 renegotiate next year. So that was the reason that contract did not get done. They had an agreement, and then Chase wanted a little bit more money, mm-hmm. which okay, nothing crazy. And the deal still would have paid him over a hundred, like over a hundred forty million over four years. Yeah. And then the and this is my problem, and mm-hmm. this is going into a whole other rant, and I'll try to keep it quick. No, go, but, go, but preach, but but I said this for as long as I've been a Bengals fan. Mike mm-hmm. Brown is the cheapest f- owner in mm-hmm. the entire NFL. Mm-hmm. And people are like, oh no, he spent money here and here. We lose our best players besides our quarterback. Yeah. We there's no reason why you couldn't have signed or sorry, I'll, let me just run this down. You didn't sign Jesse Bates to an extension because you needed to bring back T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure, whatever. But Jesse if a Bates, Jamar Chase deal doesn't get done. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, let's say this. Jesse Bates is one of the best safeties in the league, and he's balling out in Atlanta, and our yeah. defense has been hurting since he's left. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we're going to have T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. Okay, no, no, no. Now we're not going to have T. Higgins. He wants too much money, and we need to sign Chase and Burrow. Okay, so... Okay, I guess. I guess that's fair. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, I'm now not saying we're not going to re-sign Chase. I think we will. But you're causing this animosity and distractions in the locker room mm-hmm. for what? Because you don't want to get off your pocket. Then if you don't want to spend, because again, for people that don't know, the Brown family, they they don't they didn't really come with money. Like mm-hmm. they're they don't have another source of income. Their only source of in- income is the Bengals. Mm-hmm. So they treat it like a typical businessman would treat a uh their their own business right yeah. like there's like no like not... there's no other source of income yeah. this is the source of income yes so that's part of the problem but then okay then you need to get a private investor to invest in mm-hmm. this team to help you because this is like you you can't be running this team like it's 1980 yeah you, like you got to keep up with cool. the times you you know sorry. this better than i do i just want a quick question how in how involved is the owner in contract negotiations for the Bengals? Well, it's his money, right? So his daughter, so basically it's his whole family, Mm. right? You have Katie Blackburn, who she's mainly like the con, like the person that like sits Mm -hmm. down with the contract. Yeah. And, and uh, I believe, I believe, um, is it her, her husband? I think it's her and her husband really Mm. that deal with the contracts. But then, yeah, but Mike Brown is obviously, like, he still goes to practice. And, yeah. And, and you know, he talks to the players and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But, he yeah, like, they're they're all really involved. But, again, he once Mike Brown dies, the mm-hmm. team's obviously going to go down to his daughter. But mm-hmm. his daughter runs the team like him. Yeah. Because, again, they're, like, they're billionaires, right? They want to mm-hmm. keep their, their wealth. So... I only ask because, like, when I was watching Hard Knocks with the Bears this year, yeah, I'm sure that McCaskey's kids have conversations with polls and stuff, but like the DJ Moore contract, it kind of seemed like the McCaskies were a little bit hands off to where it was like, hey, Ryan, this is what we pay you to do. Get it done. No. And Ryan, well, yeah. and it, it, it seemed like Ryan Poles was the main guy in that contract. Like, obviously there was, I can't remember who the guy's name was. Um, Basically like sat down. I think it was like the budget guy. He's basically like, well, what's this going to do to the budget? And the guy's like, oh yeah, okay. That's, that's a really good contract. Like, it, yeah. it, like it just seemed like the McCaskies gave Ryan polls. Like, Hey, you get this done. We trust in you. This is what we're paying you to do. No. So basically I would say the Bengals kind of operate well, so like they don't have not. a general manager like well, Ryan Poles. Well, they, they do, they do. His name's Duke Tobin. But the mm-hmm. problem is, like Duke Tobin, I don't know. I guess he's just there collecting a paycheck because I've never heard of his name before. He, yeah, he he's the general manager, but but it, it's like 
it goes coaching staff and then mm-hmm. Duke Tobin should be here, but then it just skips over him okay. and then goes to the, the ownership group. Yeah. And that's part of the problem. Cause then, then my other problem, mm-hmm. cause again, it's the same thing with this stupid ownership team. Well, not even team family mm-hmm. is they refuse to get rid of a coach. We had yeah. Marvin Lewis from what? 2001. Yeah. Until- refused to fire him. Yeah, he until... he was a, he JD. You probably remember from listening to Mark and I. Uh, he was a running joke here on the onside kick yeah. that he still had a job every Black Tuesday, yeah. or I'm sorry, Black Monday. Yeah, and again, and here's the thing, and I I will stand on this, and I will be unbiased. Stand on business, but okay, Zach Taylor, Bengals head coach. Zach Taylor, honestly. Honestly, great locker room coach. He's a he's a great coach for mm-hmm. a rebuilding slash early contending type team. Yeah, like if you want to change the culture of your team, mm-hmm. he is a guy you want to have. The problem is he doesn't get you to the next level. His yeah. play calling, yeah. and this is what's okay. Side note: This is what's driving me absolutely freaking bananas. Mm-hmm. Is I'm I with my college team. I deal with a coach who can't call <laughs> offense to save their life. And on for the Bengals, it's the same damn deal. Mm -hmm. I literally like they're the same. You also for Florida have a coach who uh, can't open a water bottle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) it's like, you know what I'm I'm talking about, right? Yeah. The week one, he tried to open the water bottle during your press conference and couldn't do it. Yep. And that's the thing. So like this team, like Zach Taylor, Mm-hmm. His time, I know the players, Burrow loves him, the mm-hmm. ownership loves him, everybody loves him besides the fans. But, brother, th- going back to the original point, which was the game, mm-hmm. it is a fourth and two. And I know this is a little bit on Burrow, obviously, mm-hmm. but you throw, so you're going for it, I think, on New England's 48 yard, or yard line. Mm hmm. Fourth and two, you throw the ball behind the sticks on yeah. a fourth and two, and then you get stopped. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, okay, New England punts you the ball. You have a chance to march down the field and win the game. An, an atrocious drive. An atrocious drive. <laughs> it's now fourth and five. And what do you do? You you punt the football when your defense can't stop a run. Uh, what's a uh, what's his name? Freaking Demondre Stevenson, mm-hmm. he ran for 120 yards or, or 130 or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think it was 120. Yeah. And there, do you want to know what a crazy stat is, Ricky? What? <laughs> so 114 of those 120 yards came after contact. Mm-hmm. So your defense couldn't tackle. Yeah. And and he was just running wild. And so you punt them the ball. Everybody knows they're going to run the ball to to end the game, mm-hmm. and you still can't stop it. So what was the point of punting the ball? Yeah, literally that final drive was incomplete, incomplete. Pass to Moss for five yards, punt, and then the Patriots' uh, five yard rush, timeout, five. What would that nine yard rush, two yep. minute warning, then three yard rush, timeout number two. Nine yard rush, timeout number three, and then kneel, kneel, kneel. You're done. Yeah. And and again, so and before people say, Oh, well, you're just overreacting, you know. Well, here's, here's the, the thing. I, I do want to cut in. Is there a little bit of overreaction here? Is the season really over after week one? No. Okay. It's not. But but the thing is, and I, this is why I'm saying it's not an overreaction, mm-hmm. is because again, with the slow starts, we've mm-hmm. seen it for the last like four years really since the super bowl run Mm -hmm. and again not to this isn't a dig at you ricky yeah we've won one season opener since or yeah zach taylor's one in five or one in six in in uh what do you mean a dig at me though because we beat the vikings oh okay i forgot about that game even existed dude yeah in 2021 the year we went to the super bowl that was the only time we've won a season opener under zach taylor dude i forgot that season even existed no you said 2021 yeah that was the year we went to the i was an overtime win for you who was even on my team delvin delvin cook was on this team 
Dalvin yeah. Cook had a good game, 61 yards and yeah, a touchdown. Dude, Alan Thielen had a game, dude. Nine yeah. catches, 92. I miss Adam Thielen. Two touchdowns in that game. I yeah. miss Adam Thielen, man. But, Jamar Chase yeah. had a game, though. 101 was, yards and a touchdown on five catches. That was his first Ooh-wee. game. Ooh-wee. T. But, Higgins, four catches, 58 yards. We should rewatch this game. I don't even care if we lost. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, they, Dalvin Cook did fumble and he lost. But, but yeah, so this is my thing. I, I, I'm going to say it's not an overreaction mm-hmm. because it's a trend. Yeah. And, again, if the Bengals somehow, by the mm-hmm. grace of God, Dude, Joe makes the Chiefs. Too. I, I digress. Dude, he had 127 rushing yards and a touchdown yeah. against us. Yeah. You guys cooked us. I know you only yeah. won by three in overtime, but you cooked us. Yeah, no, that was a good game. I remember that. Kirk Cousins yeah. even played well. Jeez. Justin Jefferson in a pet. Okay, I got to stop looking at this box score. Go ahead. But but yeah, so it's it's just a trend. And mm-hmm. this could all be written mm-hmm. uh, off to the side if the Bengals somehow beat the Chiefs, which I'm not yeah. picking them to beat the Chiefs. But, and again, the season isn't over, but it's the same BS. And it's this, the team did it to themselves from the stupid distractions yeah. with Jamar Chase and disrupting the offense because you have Chase not practicing because you can't agree to a contract with a top five wide receiver in the league. And he's the only wide receiver that didn't get a contract out of the top wide receivers who needed one mm-hmm. or not needed one, but, but we're talking about getting yeah. one. Yeah. And yeah, and and it's just the season can still be decent. You still mm-hmm. have Joe Burrow, and he's healthy. He just got shook up in the in in the first game, and we'll see. But yeah, it's it's definitely frustrating. But my frustrations come from the same old mm-hmm. with this team, mm-hmm. with the ownership group not knowing how to spend money, and refusing to change coaches. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's that. So we're gonna have to move on to a different team now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I did. I, I, I knew I was gonna go a little long. That was about a twenty-minute rant for JD on the, on the Bengals. Um, I will say, kind of to uh, like, here's the thing. My takeaways from Week One. I'm shocked at my own team. That's a little side note. Thought we were going to lose to the Giants. I underestimated how bad the Giants were. Listen to our uh, our second segment for that. There's really three big takeaways I have from this week, JD. And you tell me what you think of these. Number one. Actually, I'll ask you. Door number one, door number two, door number three. Door one. Door number one. Buccaneers are going to be good this year. I know they played the Commanders. And I didn't expect the commander like this was a game that I was like, I didn't hate either team after this game. Like, I know the commanders lost by 17 points, but the Buccaneers looked amazing. And even in 17 points of defeat, the commanders didn't look god awful. Like Jaden Daniels played like a rookie, but like he flashed. He flashed. That's a great word. Jaden Daniels, 88 yards on the ground, two touchdowns on the ground. Through the air was serviceable. Didn't have any touchdowns. He took care of the ball, didn't throw an interception. Um, Austin Eckler probably could have been more involved in my opinion, but hey, game one with him. We'll see how it goes moving forward. This Buccaneer team, like Bucky Irving, my dude from Oregon. I loved Bucky Irving at Oregon. I was happy to see him have a great game. Godwin. I, I Oh, was I talking to you that night? I was talking to uh, Sean, uh, moderator in the Discord, about uh, like while I'm going through bets, I'm like, I can't bet on Chris Godwin. Whenever I do, he just screws me. 83 yards and a touchdown. I should have bet on him more than Amon Ross St. Brown because Amon Ross St. Brown did some things that I can't say on this podcast uh, or else I'd get us canceled. I was very angry at that. Mike Evans, two scores. Jalen McMillan, Washington rookie. He got himself a score. I know it was only, what, like a 32-yard reception, but he got himself a, a score. I'll ask you. Buccaneers for real, or is this just an overreaction to one game against a team they should have beaten? Like, like, am I right? Could they upset the Lions this week? 
I think they definitely could upset the Lions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to answer your first part of your question, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I would say it's a little bit of an overreaction because I still think that they're going to win the division. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't see them being like a thirteen win team. No, no, I no, see no. Them, I, but I they're going to be a good team. Like, they're going to be a playoff team. Yeah, yeah. I think they're going to win the division. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, I think there's that. But I think yeah, they're they're going to be competitive. Uh, I think I think they could definitely upset the Lions. Mm-hmm. But kind of like what you said at the beginning of the show, mm-hmm. I think that's more so because the Lions didn't really impress me in week one. I was going to bring them up. I I was not impressed from the Lions. No. In that I don't Sunday know what they're doing game. with Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs I don't know what they're ball. doing. I'm in Ross St. Brown. Yeah. Like, th- this is a team where it's like, va- I know they got the win. Vastly different opening game than last year when they beat the defending Super Bowl champions. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean... It, and again, I we we should have expected it though, because the the Lions last year, they they didn't really catch anyone by surprise. But last mm-hmm. year was their first like real coming out party of like, okay, we're we're good. Yeah. And I feel like I said this with like teams like we, but with the Texans, mm-hmm. and and teams like that sometimes start out start out of the gate pretty slow. Mm-hmm. It's because like. They're, I think they're a little overconfident. Yeah. And I think that might be what's happening with the Lions. Mm hmm. I mean, I'll be honest. I know I only picked it as a one in uh, the MVP confidence pool, but I got the Buccaneers beating the, beating the Lions this week. Dang. I don't know if I should have more confidence in that. Wait, I think I might have actually done the same. I got the Bucks beating the beating the Lions. I just don't like like the only saving grace for the Lions is that they play the Cardinals week three. Like this yeah. is a team where I got them losing to the Bucks. They could like we talked about it earlier with the Jordan Love stuff. They could lose to the Seahawks. I saw the Lions They could. Anyway. Like the Seahawks, I don't think I'm not as high on the Seahawks after week one as I am in the Buccaneers. Yeah, but they kind of like, disappointed me. Like, and obviously things are going to change. Like, week one isn't like, oh, this is what you are the rest of the year. I just, I I don't know. I'm just weirdly down on the Lions after week one. Like, it's just like, maybe it's because I'm and Ron didn't really get going at all. And like, our team just going to figure out, all right, like, we'll let I'm and we'll, we'll basically focus on I'm and Ra. We'll let Williams do whatever he wants. If he goes off, he ain't going to beat us. I think we're missing the we're we're Go skipping ahead. over probably the biggest factor. Go ahead. Jared Goff looked horrible. Mm-hmm. He looked awful. He looked like Jared Goff of like four years ago. And again, though, like to be fair, and mm-hmm. I, I, I only know this because of how often Ty and I talk about the Lions and yeah. football. Jared Goff does do that, though. There are certain games where he, like, reverts back to himself with the Rams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, but then there's times that he looks like, like, the new and imp- improved Jared yeah. Goff, where he actually looks like a decent quarterback. Mm-hmm. So we'll just have to wait and see. I, I just think with week one, all the overreactions are, are out there because it's, well, it's the only thing we can base mm-hmm. the season off of. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see if, if Jared Goff sucks again this week, then, then maybe, maybe we'll raise an eyebrow to that. Very quick point before we move on to the very last thing we're going to do. My third point, and it doesn't need a huge discussion. It's just take away the rookie quarterbacks, mainly Williams and Daniels are going to be fine. They're gonna be they're gonna be okay. They didn't have stellar week one games. I think Jaden Daniels had a better one than Caleb, but they were both confident. They were both strong. They didn't turn over the ball. They're gonna be fine. I do want to say one more thing. And you know, I might have been wrong about Bryce Young. That dude was on the struggle bus against the Saints. Mm-hmm. I think he had what, like three interceptions. He may be the worst quarterback in the in the league. Yeah, that that guy, man, he yeah. he can't throw the ball. Mm-hmm. His decision making is horrible. Yeah. 
I mean, I feel bad for Panthers fans. As always, we'd like to thank the people that make these videos possible, our patrons whose names are displayed on the screen now. If you would like to become a patron, go ahead and click the Patreon icon in the bottom right. And if you'd like to check out another video from MVP Sports, hit the video in the upper left. As always, thanks for watching.